Hey there, this is part one of a multi-part tutorial where we're gonna create this cool looking little cyberpunk planet thing. And this whole planet is gonna be pretty much procedurally generated. So we're gonna really dig into geometry nodes a lot and we're gonna create some materials and shaders using nodes. We'll create a foggy cyberpunky dystopian vibe with some volumetric shaders and this thing called a mist pass. And at the end, we're gonna layer things together using the compositor. All right, let's get it going. All right, I've started a brand new Blender file with the default cube here and follow me on over to the geometry nodes workspace. And with the default cube selected, I'm going to hit the new button to attach a new geometry nodes tree to this object. It doesn't really matter what the geometry is here. We just need something to attach the geometry nodes here. In fact, we're just going to get rid of this group input. I'm going to hit X to delete that and you'll notice the geometry disappears, but that's okay. We're going to be doing all our work in here and that's going to create our whole cyberpunk planet and we're going to start out with an icosphere just to get some initial geometry into this space so hit shift a bring up the search menu search for icosphere drop that right in there and connect the mesh output of that node into the group output geometry so now we have something visual here to work with now this is pretty chunky it's very there's not a lot of geometry here i want to kind of smooth this out and also make it bigger so let's make the radius about maybe 10 meters and zoom out a little bit in the viewport so we can see it and i think what i want to do is add with shift a search for subdivision surface and drop that right after the mesh output and i think we'll want maybe two levels of subdivision and the reason why i used this subdivision surface node as opposed to increasing the subdivision count of the icosphere node is because when we subdivide it using this node it gives us nice quads here to work with so notice that we have a bunch of quad faces and that's going to come in handy for us now the general plan here in this space is we're going to want to create some parts of this sphere that define the you know the dry surface the land of this planet and then some areas that are going to be kind of water or ocean or, or sea okay and i think a good way to go about doing that is to delete some of these faces and what remains is going to be the the land part of this little world so with shift a search for delete geometry and drop that in the middle here let's just move this out a little bit you'll notice that all of our geometry is deleted and the reason why is this selection node defines what we want deleted and this is a boolean input socket to this node and that boolean socket defaults to true and if everything's true that means delete everything so that's why we don't see anything right now in fact to demonstrate that let's add in with shift a a boolean node and let's keep the the value to false let's connect those together and now all our geometry is back because it's saying basically don't delete anything since all of these values are false but we want to define which faces to delete and which to keep so let's get rid of uh this boolean that we put in just for demonstration purposes and change this point domain to face so we're going to be changing we're going to be deleting faces and not just points all right so let's use a noise texture to define which faces we're going to delete and which ones we're going to keep so shift a search for noise texture drop that in here and a noise texture generates a uh, kind of a random field of continuous values between zero and one okay so if we hook up the factor which is this basically this set of, of zero to one values that it outputs if we hook that up to the selection you'll notice that nothing is it, it's still completely deleted why is that well because because the selection input boolean socket is looking for values that are zero or one and if it's basically if it's not zero it's considering it to be true or one well most of the values coming out of this factor from the noise texture are something greater than one in fact almost all of them are going to be so it's still deleting everything so what we want to do is redefine the values of this factor and map them to values of zero or one there's a couple ways to do that i like to use a color ramp to do that so we can use a color ramp just search for ramp drop it in here and change the method from linear to constant and then drag this color stop in somewhere around the middle so now you can see something's happening it's deleting a bunch of faces randomly and that's because we've basically remapped these factors which is kind of this infinite set of of numbers between zero and one we've basically took those and remapped them to either zero or black and one or white and then we fed that result into the selection 
But if we take a look at our world, it's a little bit, it's too random, it's too messy. This isn't, doesn't really look like a, a kind of a natural distribution of land and water. So to, to fix that, let's change our scale of the noise texture down pretty far, down to maybe like, I don't know, point, point 0.1 maybe. Let's just put in point 0.1 here. Take a look around. That's a little bit better. I think I like, I think I like how that's looking. And we can smooth things out a little bit more if we add another subdivision surface. So add another subdiv surface node after the delete geometry and things are a little bit smoother. In fact, let's add another level of subdiv so things are nice and smooth. But you'll notice something weird. So we have we have parts of, of the land that look kind of like that. We have little kind of areas that are pinching together or parts of the geometry that are connected to one another that we really don't want connected. What we kind of want, here's another one. What we want is this subdivision to kind of wrap itself around like this. So we don't have these kind of connected vertices. It just looks, it just looks bad. So what we need to do is split some of these edges apart before we subdivide that surface. Now to examine what we need to do, we can use a trick. We're going to be using this all the time in the next couple of videos. It's control shift click and we, you can do that trick on any node that we want. It's kind of a debugging tool. So I'm going to do that with the delete geometry node right here and it'll bring up this little viewer node right there. And what that effectively does is it stops the flow of data at that point and it outputs wherever we are, whatever happened at that point in the viewport so we can take a look at it. So let's take a look at what's going on here. And what we want to do is split these edges apart right here so they're disconnected. So when the subdivision surface node does its thing, these will be nice and rounded. So these edges here need to be separated, but I want these edges to be intact. So we'll get to that in a second, but first let's get rid of our viewer node. We can select that and hit X to get rid of that. And let's add in a split edges node. I'm going to drop that right before we subdivide it. And you can see what happens if we don't tell it where we want the edges to be split. It's going to split every edge and then we're going to end up with something like this. We don't want that. So we need to provide this selection socket with the edges that we want to be split. Now, let me go back and preview with control shift P back in our delete geometry node here. And notice that these edges, the ones we want to delete, have only one face that they're contributing to. So this edge has only this face that it's contributing to. This edge has only this one and so forth. And the ones that we want to keep intact, so this edge, this edge, all these interior ones, notice that they contribute to more than one face. So this edge has one, two faces. This edge here has one, two faces like that. And this edge here has one and two there and so on. So what's in common with the edges that we want to delete? Well, they have, they have one or, or zero faces that they're involved in. And we can get that number with a node called edge neighbors. I'm going to drop that in right here. And notice that it gives us a face count right here. So what we're going to do is take this face count and compare that with a compare node. And we can drop this compare node in here and say if it's less than or equal to one, the result of that, we want to feed into the selection for split edges. All right, now let's go over to where we subdivide and hit control shift P to preview that. And we can now tell that these edges have been properly split and we get this nice subdivision there to make it look a lot more like natural land. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the viewer now. I'm going to select that, hit X. Okay, now I think, uh, now let's add some depth to this land. And we can do that with an extrude node. So hit Shift A, search for extrude, extrude mesh. Drop that in here. And we don't want to extrude every single face individually. So uncheck individual. And then let's ease back the offset scale. Something around here would be good. Something around 0.18, I think will work for us. Looks good. And now let's uh, zoom out and take a look at what we've got. So this is kind of what we have done so far. All this stuff is the land that we've been developing. But what about the what about the sea? Well, we can go way back here. Let's do control shift click again. And we can see that this is 
you know, our, our original sphere, and we can join that up with the land that we're developing currently. And that should give us the whole, like at least the, the initial kind of shape of our planet. So let's join this up and we can do that with a join geometry node. So hit shift A, search for join geometry. Let's drop that right in the end here and hook up the this node here, which is basically what we're looking at, which is the kind of the, the water part of the planet. Let's hook that up with the land that we're developing beneath it. And we'll use that join geometry node to do that. So we'll hook that up and let's control shift click our, the join geometry at the end. And we can see that this is kind of coming together. We can delete our viewer node with X. And you know what, why don't we subdivide again the, the, the water part so it kind of looks basically, it's got, it has the same level of detail as the land. So let's use another subdivision surface and I can select this one and with shift D can duplicate that and we'll drop it in right downstream a little bit here. And I think that looks about right. Let's keep it at two levels of subdivision. I think that's good. Basically what we're doing here is let's move this down a little bit. So all this stuff here is the land and this is kind of the water and we're joining that up at the end. And this is our final output. Okay. Let's go back into the land a little bit here. Um, let's do a little bit more work on this. I don't really love how, how kind of harsh and squared off this, you know, the edge of the land is let's round that out a little bit and let's do that with another subdivision surface node. So we can use one over here, duplicate it with shift D, drop it in downstream here. And that looks, that looks nice. Maybe we don't need two levels. So let's drop it back to maybe one. I think that's all right. And let's let's shade smooth the whole thing. You'd be tempted to right click and hit shade smooth like you would any other model. But with geometry nodes, this has to be done in the tree itself. So back in here, right after our subdivision surface node, let's drop in with shift A, search for a set shade smooth, and we'll place that right in there and make sure that shade smooth is checked. And we should see everything. Well, nope, we didn't. <laughs> Only the land is, is set uh, shade smooth. So let's let's actually move this with Shift D. Let's move that right at the end. So that's our last step. And we can dissolve this with Control X. So now everything is smooth. So that looks pretty good to me. Now you'll notice you don't have to fix this, but I'm going to. So you see that there's a little bit of a gap in here. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see. See the, the ocean here and the land, they're not really fused together. There's a little bit of a kind of an opening there. I don't really like that. So let's fix that. And I think maybe just the easiest, hmm, how should we do this? I think the easiest way to do that is to scale up the ocean out a little bit so it's more flush with the land. So let's do that. And we can do that with a transform geometry node. So hit shift A, search for transform geometry place that right after we subdivide it. And this is gonna be a very, very small amount. If you click the first field in a set of three fields like this and drag vertically down, just like this, you can type in uh, a value and all three fields will change. So I'm gonna type in 1.01 .01, and I think that did it, right? So that, that pretty much closed this up nicely. Yep, that's good. So 1.01 .01 on the scale in a transformer geometry node is all you need to fix that problem. And there we have it. This is the very first step in this little planet that we're going to make. And now what's cool here is this is, you know, why are we doing all this work? Well, it's because we want to be able to change things and, uh, you know, randomize things in a procedural way. So it's kind of fun to do that. So we can change this 3D noise texture to 4D. And what that really does is give us a, a W value. And this W is really just a, like a seed, like a random seed. So we can change this W and kind of change what we, you know, how we want our world to be. Uh, we can do a lot with this. I'm just going to leave it at zero for now. Uh, we can change the, the scale. Okay. That remember it was, it was five by default. So that's, that's what it would have looked like if we didn't change the scale. It doesn't really look good. So let's bring it back to 0.1. Looks better. And then this color ramp here is where we remap those values, those random zero to one values 
coming out of the noise texture, we reassign those to either zero or one. And we can control the distribution of that zero or one remapping with this slider. So if we want more ocean, we bring this back. I guess it's total ocean planet now. And if we want more land, just drag this towards the right. So make something that's kind of looks good to you. Play with the scale, play with the detail of the noise texture. And just kind of, you know, make something that looks generally okay to you. We can always come back and change this later, which we'll probably do. Okay, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. And I think let's let's just kind of bunch this up a little bit. Uh, let's keep this. Let's see, what should we do here? I'm going to move this group output, our final output out a little bit. Move this stuff in, tighten that up a little bit. And let's select all these nodes and hit Control J to join those up. And we can hit F2 then and name that. Uh, we'll name this. Um, planet terrain or maybe just let's name it planet surface so we have our planet surface defined that's what we're looking at and we're going to do a bunch more work in here in the next video and that's going to be distributing points all, all throughout the surface of the land here and placing buildings on on the land so that's what we'll do in the next video uh, i'll see you there